Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo, we're here at the South Park Center and I'm delighted to be joined with Chris with his movie Ethnic Slut. Let's take another clip. That was, that was fucking amazing. Oh yeah. <laughs> Chris, thank you for coming from Brooklyn, New York City, uh, to be here. Um, and thank you for bringing your film to us as well. It's delightful to have at the film festival. Um, for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis. Yeah, sure, of course. And thank you for having me. Uh, so, Ethnic Slut is about a man having an identity crisis. So he uses his identity for the wrong reasons. And uh, in this case, it's uh, him trying to uh, have a threesome with a white couple that has a fetish. It, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a brilliant film. Uh, I love this character. The, the character could almost have like a series just, just going through, which we'll, you know, hey, we'll talk about, right? Yeah. But, um, but no, really, really good following his story. And you've got amazing dark humor. I just, I just love how you took us on this journey. And the sad thing is, like, I mean, it is, this is not unusual. This is not something that actually doesn't happen. But tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind the story for you. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I was, you know, I selfishly wanted to make something that I could be in. Mm -hmm. And I also was thinking of like something uh, situational, episodic kind of. And I do live in Brooklyn and Brooklyn is a very interesting, unique place, especially the, the, the dating scene and all this stuff. And everyone's very conscientious of, of uh, you know, identity and all this stuff, which is great. It's really mm. nice that everyone cares so much and wants to learn. But then you have the people who kind of like slip in through the cracks mm -hmm. and they they also want to learn, but they don't really go about it maybe the best way. And they'll yeah. be like, hey, where, where are you from? Oh my God, you have, yeah. you look like you can be from here. You look like you yeah. can be from there and all this stuff. And sometimes it gets a little weird. And so that that's kind of where the inspiration came from. And also a bunch of my friends who have, uh, again, like very interesting dating lives. Stuff like, I'm like, well, I don't, there's no, like nobody's talking about this. I don't see this on any TV shows, on in any movies. Like this is so unique and, but at the same time in Brooklyn, it's not, it's like very common because people are very polyamorous and open and this and that. And so I just wanted to capture all that kind of stuff. And there's a lot, a ton of labels. Like everyone's just obsessed of just like, you know, yeah. putting in a box in the way. So like the dating scene these days is, is, is quite complicated. It's a very sort of like swipey, very sort of like all boxed in. Like, were you trying to sort of also kind of give out of just like what it's like to experience these days? And as you said in Brooklyn, it's not easy. It's not easy to kind of experience this and sort of almost, but I do love the tone that you made kind of almost had this obviously very humoristic kind of approach to it as well. Yeah, um, it, yeah, it's 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 a lot. New York is uh, like the dating capital, I think, of the at least the country. Yeah, and this is why every like sitcom is based in New York. Like, yeah. everybody's dating, you know, all mm. the time. And uh, it was really a way in for me because I I also have been told a lot, like write about your identity, play it up. Do you, you know, because I, I grew up here in, in this country, I'm from Miami, and I've, you know, I felt a little like fake having to kind of force my Cuban uh, narrative a little yeah. bit too much. I mean, I, it's so, it's a very important part of me, yeah. but people wanted, everybody just wanted me to play it up, play it up, play it up. So this is about what happens when someone plays it up yeah. a little too yeah, much yeah, yeah. and it goes bad. Yeah. And, you know, the dating world just seemed like a kind of interesting place for that to happen. Well, listen, let's talk Chris about how you took on many roles in this project in front and behind, did a fantastic job. What was that experience like for you? That, it was, uh, it was, in, it was very interesting. I did feel in over my head sometimes for sure, but it was really fun. I love to act in the things I'm in because I feel like 
it gives me such a different relationship to the actors because mm -hmm. I'm like in the trenches with them, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm one of them. So like, it feels like in the past when I'm not, when I'm behind the camera, it's like a diff. it's a, you have, I mean, you speak to each other completely different because yeah. you know, they, they look at you different, obviously. And uh, this, so that's something I loved about this, but I also had to learn to really trust uh, people in my crew. And I also had to kind of adjust some of the roles. Mm -hmm. So uh, like the script supervisor on my set had a much more elevated role. Okay. Like wasn't only a scripty, it was kind of my eyes and ears yeah. behind the camera uh -huh. and would report to me is my good friend Bruno, mm -hmm. who I trust a lot. And uh, we talked about everything beforehand. So we were on the same page completely about like tone, um, you know, uh, uh, visual language, all this stuff. Like, we really talked it through. Also, my AD, I, I made sure to talk about all that stuff with, so that if he was busy doing something, she would also mm -hmm. be someone I can trust and go to, and all this stuff. So I, I made sure everyone was on the same page. Mm -hmm. I made sure also to like, from the sound person, to the PA, to the producer. Like, I wanted to know what everybody thought. Uh, you know, just like a very inclusive set. Yeah. And uh, which I think was a product of me being in front of the camera, but it yeah. worked out great. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and I, I just thought also, also just the, the you know, your, your, your entire yourself and, and, and the rest of the cast just had such good timing. Like, you know, like, you, the, the, like which is how they responded to each other. Um, how much of how much of it was because sometimes it's in especially in comedy it's like you can almost discover things as you as you move through the 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 the, the, uh, the, the film. But how much of that in terms of direction? Like how much did you sort of direct and how much did you kind of let things play? How what was your process there? Well, I I love I love improv mm -hmm. and I kind of wish we we leaned into the improv a little bit more here, but because mm -hmm. of the locations we kind of like had to wrap it up, but. What I usually like to do is that we'll do a couple takes with the the script dialogue, mm -hmm. and then we start taking, we start doing some where it's a bit more improv mm -hmm. and I'm just like feeding uh, maybe like some inspiration, some like kind of lines to the actors yeah. during the takes. Can be a nightmare for an editor, but <laughs> luckily mine was really happy with having so much variety and choices. What have you? What have you? What have you learned from this experience? I mean, again, I think I, I love that you've taken on these characters. I almost felt like it felt like I was like, oh my goodness, I was in, in the depth of like a series of characters. I felt like I kind of got to know these characters. Like they really felt very thought out. Um, but what was it? What have you learned mostly from from this experience? And and kind of where do you envision you know taking this film next? I learned. Yeah, I learned so much. I learned a lot about, um, again, like trusting my crew and building like a different kind of relationship to, mm -hmm. to, to, to them. And I also learned a lot about casting. One of the roles was like, it was difficult to cast. I was also trying to cast just local Brooklyn comedians. So I learned a lot about casting, how to reach out to people. Uh, I changed one of the changed one of the roles pretty drastically for the actor. Um, I learned how to you know like yeah pivot as you go like always be comfortable pivoting. Mm -hmm. We lost like a location like the day before, and you know I had to adjust and it worked out better. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just being open, open yeah. to change, not getting stuck on something. I think mm -hmm. is one thing I definitely learned. Mm -hmm. Like just always be ready to evolve yeah. because. It's, I think it's like happening for a reason, you know? Yeah, you, no, you, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and um, are you, are you, is, there, is there plans? Is there what's next for you? Is there plans to take the film or other projects you would like to do next? Uh, this film, I would, I have, I have written a pilot version of it and I'm, I think it almost feels like it deserves for me to at least try to write like a feature version of it. Yeah. So I'm working on, on that definitely. And uh, other than that, you know, always writing. So yeah. I have a couple other things I'm, I'm working on. Yeah, yeah. And um, just, you know, to kind of go back, like what I'm sure it's, you've got a lot, it's been in the room with an audience. It's been quite fascinating to hear people's reactions. How, how has that been for you? It's, it's definitely nerve wracking for me. <laughs> I kind of feel like I, 
I just kind of uh, get tunnel vision and I'm just like, you know, <laughs> I get like uh, become uh, catatonic a little bit, but it is nice to hear the reactions and what lines people uh, laugh more yeah. at, Yeah, you know, and uh, kind of like how it builds up. And sometimes I'm like, you know, yeah, it's, it's fun to hear the things that I thought of before in my head writing the script. I'm like, oh, this will build up really funny. Mm -hmm. And then hearing people's laughter also build up in the right way. And it's very satisfying. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. I was in the audience last night on a hard house. It was, it was really nice to see all the reactions last night. I was like, yes, yes, they laughed yeah. the moment. The, the, or, or sometimes you're surprised as well, actually. So Absolutely, which is always yeah. great. Um, as a filmmaker, like in your career thus far, is there any kind of things that you go by or share in your creativity and advice that you could share for other filmmakers out there um, to, to help them and support on their journey? Yeah, I would say um, just push through, you know, always create, don't stop. It's like a muscle. So life gets in the way all the time, but mm -hmm. try to always keep some space for it yeah and keep working and uh yeah really just like keep going at it because yeah. the, the only people that don't make it or make content or uh are the ones who give up you know? yeah it's and, true yeah so it's just true. be confident uh don't listen to that voice inside your head too much yeah and how do we turn that off? Like, I'm like, come on. You don't. You don't. It's just there, isn't it? You've got to push there. through. you got to push um, through. Well, listen, we're so grateful, firstly, that you traveled across the country to be here. So lovely to see, um, you know, Ethnic Slut in, in Los Angeles. And I'm really excited for the future. So thank you so much. We're looking forward to it. So Chris, everybody, really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.